Researchers at the University of California, Davis, are working on the science of making cattle farming more environmentally friendly. They found that feeding cattle seaweed pellets actually cuts methane emissions by 40%. We're joined now by Ermias Kebriab, uh, Associate Dean and Professor at the University of California, Davis. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I, to start off by telling us uh, the problem you're trying to solve. Um, it's methane burps and farts from cattle, isn't it? Yes, uh, it's uh, mostly methane burps, uh, but uh, there's about 5% that comes from the other, uh, the back end of the animal as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so methane is a greenhouse gas, which is about 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide over about 20 years of, uh, of time. So it's uh, quite a, a serious problem. But I mean, this has been going out on for millions of years since we had ruminants, etc. Isn't it a, a natural thing or can we even cut, cut these emissions? It is indeed a natural thing. Um, cattle basically evolved together with uh, microbes that are responsible for converting some of the hydrogen that the animals produce into methane. Um, it, yeah, it's definitely a natural process, but the problem is that methane itself is a, a greenhouse gas. So when we have um, too much methane in the atmosphere, then uh, it is responsible for elevated temperatures. So what we're trying to do is to try to reduce the amount of methane uh, so that we can stay under the 1.5 degrees centigrade um, that that's the Paris Agreement is trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, so from different sectors of the economy, we're trying to cut methane because cutting methane actually gives us the best chance to reduce the, the, the warming of the planet. Um, so tell us how, I mean, I've heard of this. I, I know other people have been looking into this phenomenon. But tell us how could seaweed in a cattle's, a cow's or a beef animal's digestion system actually cut the methane? Uh, sure. So uh, seaweed has a ac active ingredient called a bromoform that is uh, similar to an enzyme that the methanogens or the the uh, ma microbes in the gut of the animal require mm -hmm. in order to convert carbon dioxide and hydrogen into methane. So it basically inhibits these things from uh, going forward, and the result is that those methanogens, those microbes, they are not able to make the the, the methane. So it's uh, an inhibitor. It's a chemical inhibitor that will then stop the methanogens from making methane, and we see much less methane when this in inhibitor is uh, uh, in the mix. But the cow, or the animal, I keep saying cow, but the animal is still able to it's, digest the, the material in the same way? Yes, absolutely. So there's no change in, in the animals, and it works in all ruminants, so cows and beef cattle and sheep and goats. So in all ruminants, it, it works the same way. And uh, yeah, so the animal will not be affected uh, at all. They will be eating uh, n n normally and there will be digestion. Um, so they will have a little bit more excess hydrogen because it's the hydrogen that's converted into methane. So there's be an increase in, in hydrogen emissions, uh, which we try to redirect into actually making more, more body mass. So we've seen in other studies, if you reduce the methane substantially by over 50% or so, you see an increase in productivity as well, because methane itself is energy. And so if you conserve energy, that energy has to go somewhere, and, and sometimes it goes into making more products. Well, that's it. I guess farmers are happy to hear that if it makes the uh, the creatures grow more uh, grow more quickly. Yes, so it's a win-win kind of situation. We reduce the methane better for the environment, and then we improve the productivity as well, better for farmers uh, also. What we don't know at the moment is that how much is going to cost to produce the the seaweed and be able to uh, deliver it to the to, to the farmers. That's a good question, yeah, because, uh, I mean, can you harvest this seaweed from the wild or would you have to start cultivating it? You can harvest it from the wild, but the issue is that you will not have a consistent product, so you don't know the concentration of the active ingredient if you do that. Uh, but there are a number of companies right now, a couple in the U.S. and then some in Australia, that have already grown this um, kind of uh, at a commercial scale. Mm -hmm. um, so what they do is they have some stock of the uh, of the seaweed in the marine environment, and then they bring it into an like, aquaculture system so that they can control the amount of nutrients that are given to the to the seaweed, and then they control the temperature and everything else so that they can grow quickly and it, it become more scalable. So this research is going on at the moment. One tricky thing, apparently, if you're working with pasture animals that uh, you know, the farmers only <clears throat> in contact with occasionally, 
as opposed to dairy cattle, it, it could be harder to get the uh, to get the seaweed uh, ingredient into them. Yes, exactly. So this uh, latest trial that we've done is to try to uh, get an answer to that. And, and what we've done was to actually go into, out into the pasture, uh, work with grazing animals, and uh, a lot of the times, particularly in the northern climes, um, maybe five, six months of the year, there's no much grass growing, uh, could be covered in snow. So what farmers do is they supplement them with protein and, and other nutrients. So this is the, that's why we use it as a pelletized form, in a pellet form, so that they can easily include it within the supplement that they get on a daily basis. So at least for part of the year, you should be able to get this uh, the, the same way that they will get the, uh, the extra supplements so that uh, you will be able to reduce methane emissions in that way. So we moved from powder base, which is more relevant to dairy cattle, into uh, pellet base, which will be a lot easier to integrate it with uh, feed for beef cattle uh, in pasture. Fascinating story.